Uh, hello everyone, welcome finally to my new video. And in this video I will show you how to create a script uh, which will automatically add dimensions between this interior side of the wall and the closest duct. And it doesn't need to be duct, uh, it works perfectly fine for the table trays. And I did also test uh, this script uh, on the structural columns, but I really doubt uh, that uh, you will place the dimensions between the interior side of the wall and the structural columns. So uh, I think you will always use for that uh, grids, but it can also work on the civil elements, not just on the MP elements. But uh, you will see when I open the script, if you are using this script on the some category, which is, let's call it civil category, you will just need to find uh, some substitution for this uh, middle elevation uh, parameter in order to tell the script uh, for that uh, category and for that uh, element which parameter should use regarding the height. In the last video, in the last script, uh, we did have that simple situation when we want to add automatically dimensions between the center of the one element to the center of the other element, uh, which is okay for the grids and that is okay for the round objects. But now, uh, hence, we have a rectangular element. Uh, now we want to use, for example, this kind of annotation between the interior side of the wall and the closest side of the element. And for that purpose, it is really important to know where is uh, the interior side of the wall. And uh, in the previous video, I did use the generic walls because when you want to add the dimension from the center of the one element to the other, it doesn't matter which side is exterior, which side is interior. And in this case, I'm using some exterior uh, brick wall because visually it's clear which side uh, is exterior side. So over here I have uh, three different rooms. I have some duct passing through those rooms. So this is like situation when you have some duct uh, from this side going somewhere else. And the script does not make uh, any difference regarding the element system. So in this case I have duct which is supplier and here I have a returner. But it really does not matter. The script will just find the closest side of the element and it will add dimension. Uh, we can now run the script. And uh, yes, I have two versions of the script. I probably did have 15 versions of the script, but overall I did have uh, two different approaches. And uh, for this first approach, I also did record a video, but uh, I think that uh, that script was not uh, good enough to publish that video. So I did create new version of the script and I did use fundamentally different approach. I will show you briefly also this Dynamo script just to point uh, where I did have a problem dealing with that script. And now I will run this second script. Okay, I think that we have all dimensions. And overall I did write some somewhere that uh, I will eventually create some master script for these automatical dimensions because I want to also have a logic inside the script which will be in a way that the script needs to recognize if I'm adding a dimensions for the rectangular object or for the round object. And if I want to add dimensions for the round object, I don't want to use this closest side between the walls and the object. I want to use grid and the center line. But if I want to add dimension for the rectangular element, then it's okay to uh, continue with this approach. Also, I have my own uh, logic inside the script for those uh, dimensions line. You can modify that in a way which you think it's better. Uh, but also, if I create some additional that, and because we did say that the system does not play any role, um, and because I did have supply and return, why not? We can add also exhaust. And let's now run the script again. So now we have these dimensions, these dimensions over here for this duct. Uh, for this duct, I don't know why, but we don't have dimensions. For this duct over here we have, and also for this horizontal duct we have. So let's see how many dimensions we have. 
uh, 11 and how many ducks we have 12 so for uh, one element we will not have dimensions and uh, I think that is okay I did put a lot of effort in this script as I told you I will anyway create that master script so if I find why uh, uh, this uh, dimensions is not showing for this element I will let you know and okay uh, those are dimensions for the ducts and of course uh, because those dimensions are really a reference to the ducts if I move some duct I will also uh, change the value for dimensions so it's not that I'm, that I'm using some trick uh, to create dimensions I think when you're using the lines to create dimension that is not the beam philosophy and I do not support that that kind of uh, approach uh, so if you are creating some dimensions you must reference uh, that dimension correctly uh, and for uh, this uh, duct that is okay so now I will delete those dimensions for the ducts I want to show you how the script uh, works with the cable trace I don't know maybe here so I have some cable trays, let's add one more here. And uh, now if I choose uh, cable trays instead of ducts, cable, 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 okay, and run the script. So for this cable trays I have dimension, also for this cable tray over here, for this cable tray over here, and for this cable tray unfortunately for this cable tray I don't have dimension and again of course those uh, dimensions are really reference to the cable trays so if I move the cable trays okay uh, probably there there was also the dimension for this cable trays but it didn't show uh, but yeah so we if we uh, move this cable tray it will also change the value for dimension and uh, that is it now i will delete uh, cable trays and those additional ducts so just when we are looking uh, inside the dynamo and we want to follow the geometry uh, to have a better view uh, what is happening inside the dynamo so now i will show you both the dynamo script which i created so at first let's see this uh, first approach that i have um, when I was trying to create this kind of script uh, and the key nodes are uh, the nodes over here and I didn't do anything big uh, essentially I did use uh, genius log key uh, reference node this node over here just when I start dealing with the script um, I did found that I don't have proper results when I'm using vertical uh, references so I wanted to use this node because I know that uh, Genius Lock have dedicated a uh, node for the ducts but if I'm gonna invest uh, a lot of effort to create some script I don't want to create uh, the script which will work only with the ducts I want to create the script which will work for the some group of categories not just for the one category and my choice was uh, this node over here and as I told you eventually I did realize that uh, I have better result if I am using horizontal edges but uh, unfortunately I couldn't retrieve uh, horizontal references so I did look that Python script and I realized that if I change uh, this row over here um, in original node you will find that here uh, Genius Lock has the Z component, so it will uh, look to the height of the element and it will decide which reference and which edges it will take. And I did transfer that to be a horizontal. And I'm going in the two directions, so I have that for the X and Y. So here is the X. And that is the only change between the original and uh, nodes that I did use but nevertheless even i did invest some effort to create this entire script and i also create a video and as i told you i didn't want to publish that video uh, at the end i did have a very hard time to actually realize what is the behind of the reference so uh, 
Uh, I know that you have a node which can transfer the surface to the reference, but I don't know if there is some node which can tell me, okay, for the sum, for the sum list of the references, this is the actual geometry which is behind. Uh, so I did try to go as long as I can with the lines, with the edges, and in some moment when I uh, wanted to switch to the references, then I have a problems with the sorting because different elements are not on the same place when you're looking for the lines and the references so uh, that was a nightmare for troubleshooting eventually i did have some some proper results but i chose to abandon this entire script and now this is my uh, second approach and second script probably the 15th script but let's say that <laughs> that is a second script and I wanted to build this script around this node over here. So uh, my logic behind this approach is I will control which lines I will use, which surfaces I want to use, uh, how I want to filter those surfaces, how I will find the closest surfaces, and only then. So I think uh, all the nodes um, from, from the start to this node over here are the native generic uh, Dynamo uh, nodes from the library. And from this point, I will use this clockwork uh, node. So uh, when I define which surface I want to use and which surface are the closest, then I will transfer those surfaces to the reference. Uh, and I think this is a better approach. And I did lie. Uh, here I can see that uh, we did have over here that Genius Locky custom node for the walls. But I think, except that all other nodes uh, from the start to this point over here are the generic Dynamo nodes. And okay, let's see what's the philosophy here. I will run the script so we can have a geometry in the background. As I told you, I don't want to uh, use some nodes which is only for the ducts. We want to have a freedom to choose category. So we did choose in this example ducts. Uh, we did retrieve those uh, duct elements and as I told you if you want to use this script on some civil elements uh, when I say civil elements I mean on the floors, walls, columns, whatever which is architectural and structural you will just need to replace this parameter over here because middle elevation is a parameter uh, which is common for MEP installations and if you have some other category you will just need to find out which parameter defines the height of the element and just you will type that new parameter name and that's it basically. So okay, now we have elements, we will immediately retrieve surfaces and you, you know that uh, in any case when we have some rectangular object you, we will have six different uh, surfaces for the one element. So it's a top, bottom, front, back, left and right. And uh, now we need to determine uh, at first which surfaces are side surfaces. And then we will determine which uh, surfaces are closest to the wall. So I did go step by step. And uh, I know that at first I can easily detect uh, which surfaces are uh, parallel to this uh, z-axis, so I can easily uh, detect uh, that uh, bottom and top surfaces and eliminate them. From that point, I did uh, read the length uh, of the other surfaces. Basically, I did again convert all of that uh, to the curves, to the lines. I did uh, retrieve the length, and when I find uh, the surfaces which have bigger length, then I will uh, adopt that uh, that surfaces is a side surfaces. Okay. So basically, at the end of this first entire group, you can see that we have only fourteen surfaces, and on the beginning, we did have. 42, so 42 are all six surfaces multiplied by the number of the ducts uh, and at the end we did find only those side surfaces. I will just turn off the preview. So now we have only those side surfaces and we have seven ducts. Uh, when we multiply that with two surfaces 
it's uh, in total 14 uh, different surfaces. Now, from this point, we need to find closest surfaces to some wall. So uh, we must include now this portion of the walls. Uh, we want to play with horizontal edges uh, and horizontal references. So at first, we will deal with the geometry, with, uh, with the lines, basically. Uh, we want to find uh, the closest uh, side of the duct comparing to all walls. And we did have uh, this entire logic in uh, a previous video and the previous script. So when you have zero for a value in that comparison, uh, that basically means that uh, that duct intercept with that wall. And you don't want to leave a zero in this case because it this node will pick up that zero. So when you find that uh, basically clash, you you want to add some big random number uh, instead of that zero, so you can detect really minimal values. And over here we have for those seven ducts those minimal values, uh, which will be the value. Uh, at the end for our dimensions, if everything is okay. So now, because we did detect closed surfaces, now we can say, okay, we have seven ducts, we have seven closed surfaces, and now we want to convert that to be a duct reference. And that is okay, from one side we did finish the story. Uh, now I could use uh, this entire uh, logic and this geometric distance node, uh, but because here uh, when I did compare surfaces and the walls, in this case I did have two uh, surfaces, I didn't know which surface is closer, so at the end I did have uh, 504 different values. Now because I know which surface is closest, I want to reduce the number of calculation and to avoid again filtering and sorting at, at the end. So in this case, I have the half of that number, which I did have previously. The logic is entirely the same. And on the end, we will have seven different uh, references for the wall. This logic again over here, we did have in our previous video. So now when I have seven references for the duct and seven references for the wall, I want to split that in a way that for the each duct reference, I have wall reference near to that reference. And that is the bigger side of this entire story. We did complete the references. We want to produce those dimensions in the active view. And now there is a question about the lines. I told you that I did play a little bit and I did create my logic where I want to place those dimensions. And you have uh, absolutely freedom to create some new logic or to modify this one. And also, because, I mean, you're dealing with a PC here, so if you create some dimensions and you add some more elements and you again create dimensions, if you don't create some logic like this, the Dynamo will keep adding the same and same dimension. So I wanted to avoid that, and uh, I will retrieve all dimensions which uh, Dynamo created in this uh, last run. I will also include all dimensions which I previously had in my model. I will merge all of that, uh, proceed to this node over here. I want to retrieve all location of all dimensions which I have in the model. And then, if I find the dimensions on the same place, I will leave one dimension and I will delete all those duplicate values. And basically, uh, that is the entire script. Uh, I hope that you will find this script useful. Again, regarding that master script, I don't know when I will create it because all of this I'm doing in my free time, so eventually it will come. But I think before that master script, I will make that script which can align dimensions and uh, tags, which you also ask. So we'll go one by one and eventually we will create all of them. Thank you for watching. Bye.